Good morning, everybody. It is Melanie at Minnesota Title, and I'm going to go over a quick Title 101 flash class and tell you some things that you need to know about Title in 30 minutes or less. So today we are going to discuss a little bit about who we are, what is Title, and the Title process. So Minnesota Title has a combined 30 plus years experience and that means a lot of people that work for our company have been in Title a very long time. Some of them started as processors or coordinators or delivery people and what have you, but they love Title, they know what they do, and so we have a team of a lot of highly knowledgeable people. You know, Minnesota Title's been around, I'd say seven or so years, transferred ownership a few times, but now we're nearly I'd say three years as Minnesota Title becoming stronger and busier as time goes on. And we really have created a great team here at Minnesota Title. What makes us special? So at Minnesota Title, I like to set people up with a specific team. So if you're a real estate agent and you're interested in using us, you know, maybe it's more location, maybe it's personality, but whatever it is, I want you to be able to work with the same coordinator and the same processor each time you send a file so that you can build that relationship and trust that comes along with that. So if you haven't been set up with a team yet, reach out to me. I'm happy to set you up. We also have multiple locations. We have spots all over the metro, from Burnsville to Otsego, Woodbury, Minnetonka, Coon Rapids, Maple Grove, Uptown, Northeast, Edina, Roseville, Eden Prairie, Mendota Heights, and we are still growing. <laughs> As you know, location is key sometimes when it comes to real estate of where there's a closing company. And then obviously smooth closings. At the end of the day, that's our goal. We don't want you to have to stress or worry about sending a file and having us take care of it. So smooth closings. Our inspiration, yes, we do strive to keep the family vibe tight and work together as a team, keeping communication open and doing what it takes to get you to a smooth closing. You'll hear that a lot, smooth closing. Everybody wants a smooth closing. So what is title? Yes, very simple. It's a document that proves you're the owner of the property, but more so what it states is it's a legal way of saying you own a right to something. So for real estate purposes, title refers to ownership of the property, meaning that you have the rights to use that property. It may be a partial interest in the property or it may be a full interest in the property. However, because you have the title, you can access the land and potentially modify it as you see fit. Title also means that you can transfer that interest or a portion that you own to others. However, you can never legally transfer more than you own. So some people think, you know, title and deed is kind of the same thing, but it's not, you know, they property deeds and titles, they're, they're actually, they refer to two separate legal concepts. So when you own a proper property entirely, you'll possess both the deed and the title, but a title is distinct from the deed. Deeds on the other hand are actually the legal documents that transfer the title from one person to another. And sometimes the deed is referred to as the vehicle of the property interest. So title is title. <laughs> a little bit about the title process. So, and I do have, a, we have another class too that goes through the entire life of a title or the life of a real estate transaction, whether if that's of interest to you, we do those classes as well. But we're just gonna to talk today a little bit about the title process. So it's the final step when buying a home. So once that purchase agreement is signed, the title company, us, handles that transaction until the closing. So you have, as a real estate agent, have a completed purchase agreement, and agent worksheet, which we also provide, or sometimes bigger teams have their own documentation or platform that they use. As long as we have all the information that we need, and you submit it to the closing coordinator. That's your first point of contact. And again, if you haven't been set up with the team, reach out to me and I'll set that up for you. And then your file's in good hands. The coordinator opens up the order, uh, assigns a file number, orders the assessment search, property search, and flat drawing, gets that closing scheduled is the main thing that they do also. And researching title history. So this is, this is the whole thing. We, we check those county records for any issues, liens, unpaid mortgages, divorces. Basically, the importance of the title search is huge. Um, there's many defects that can affect the validity of a property title transfer and prevent an owner from receiving clear ownership. 
So by clearing title, it basically means we remove any clouds or defects that can affect it so it becomes clear, like a clean slate for the new owners. Defects can be anything from unsuspected errors to the property, various liens against the property for work performed, second mortgages, unpaid taxes, things like that. We'll go through a little bit more of those in the slides to come, just so you can have an idea for things that can actually come up when somebody's doing a title search. And so then we take care of any of those clouds and clear it. And then we provide title insurance. That's the huge thing. So uh, title work gets started, an app structure goes over the county records and all that, and um, the examiner goes over everything and they make a task list uh, that needs to be cleared and send it to the coordinator who basically clears it all up too. And then when the coordinator clears the title, they schedule it. That was a little bit last on that last slide there. <laughs> Um, and then I'll go over a little bit more about the title insurance policies and the differences between those and then get you the keys. We basically explain all the documents to the buyers and sellers, notarize signatures, verify funds, obtain the final approvals, and then checks are cut and dispersed at the closing table. And then we prepare and send the loan package for the lender's instructions and mail checks for invoices, send wires for payoffs, and a file to the recording department. So... <laughs> These are all the common title issues. It's crazy. We have a huge list of 70 different ways a person can lose their home. So um, I can send that to you. Just let me know. We'll just go over a few examples here. Delinquent property taxes, IRS liens, divorce. Divorce could be huge because it results in a division of, of marital assets. So per Minnesota divorce laws, all marital property needs to be divided you know, evenly between the spouses. And if one party keeps the house, once the court awards the person the marital home, the next step is to remove the former spouse from the title. And a really quick way to do that is called a quit claim deed. A quit claim deed is basically a legal document that transfers ownership of a property from one person to another. And since both parties are already aware of any possible existing issues, the quit claim deed basically is a simple process that forgoes all the amount of paperwork a person would normally have to go to. And typically people that were married in their house, they understand what was going on. So it's, it's a very easy way to transfer that over. Some other ones, uh, judgments, um, unpaid child support. Having a child support lien on a home is, is sometimes common. Um, you know, past due child support until it's paid, there could be a lien on the property. So it's automatically placed on past due support of $500 or more. So usually the custodial parent files a lien with the same office where the property is registered or recorded. And then a lien on your house would be filed with the county recorder in the county where your house is. And that lien remains until the child is no longer entitled to support. So with a lien, the parent can force the sale of the property or wait until the property is sold or refinanced and then get the money that they're owed. Um, probate documents. So, I mean, when you die, your estate goes through a process called probate, right? So during probate, any outstanding debts are paid off and your assets are distributed to your beneficiaries. And if you pass down real property, the beneficiary may or may not need to change the title of the house before selling. It depends on how the house was passed down. So if two spouses own a house as joint tenants with a right of survivorship, ownership of the house will transfer to the surviving spouse upon one spouse's death. In this instance, the surviving spouse generally does not need to change the deed as one spouse's death automatically transfers the deed. But the surviving spouse will just need to provide a death certificate when selling the house. But things can get really complicated if, if somebody dies unexpectedly and these things weren't, weren't dealt with prior. Um, you know, just some things to discuss with your clients. Mechanics liens too. Mechanic liens are basically legal documents that essentially reserve the rights of the filer to seek unpaid compensation. So they're usually filed by contractors or subcontractors or any supplier that never received payment for some work that they performed. So for example, if you hired a contractor to build a new swimming pool in your yard and they do all the work and you have this beautiful pool, but at the end of the project, you refuse them, you refuse to pay the last five grand, let's say then that contractor can sue you for breach of a contract, yes, but also place a lien on the property as an additional remedy for them. So they can create a cloud on the title. So that's like a cloud, meaning that they appear in public property records, which we would potentially find. And then liens are sometimes said to travel with the land. So when someone buys your house, 
and they take the property subject to a contractor's lien. So ask all those questions, you know, get, get copies of documents. So we, we have everything we need up front and anything can be adjusted and amended. It just has to be known and agreed upon. So it's highly unlikely you'd be able to sell your home if you don't deal with the liens, um, but just as long as those things are all brought to light. So, just throwing it in here, closing day is the last moment your client will remember. And so we really wanna feel proud and confident that we do a good job for you and provide an enjoyable experience. So as a real estate agent, you do your job, we do ours. That's what I always say. It's, you should just be able to send it and forget it. And of course, if you are the type of person that wants to know every little detail and be tied into everything, let us know. We can do that. Some people prefer to not hear anything. Just send them an invitation for the closing and have at her. So it, it's all about what you want. So communication is key in trying to make it be the best experience for you and your clients. So now we'll go into a little bit about title insurance. Um, so the primary purpose of title insurance is to prevent loss. Loss can occur because of defects in the title, like we talked about, claims against the property, acts of fraud. Sometimes there's mistakes in the county record. We do our best to catch these things, but you never know if something is going to come up. So it's worth it to get title insurance to protect the biggest investment of your life. Everybody gets it that I know of. 99.9% .9 of people do. There's a very small few that would consider maybe not getting it, for example, if they say, well, I'm buying with cash, that's just a matter of expense, why would I need to pay for that? But actually, it's a very important thing. So sometimes the sellers, um, like there's an example here where uh, the sellers really wanted out of this property. So even though the property was worth like $500,000, they ended up selling it to people that were paying cash for $100,000. And these people were absolutely ecstatic. They thought it was the best deal of their life. And so they didn't even tell anybody about it because they didn't want it bought out from underneath them. Paid the hundred grand, got this house. And then a year later, they found out there was some unpaid mortgages. There was a lien against it. They had no idea. At the end of the day, they did end up losing their $100,000 and they lost the house. And all they would have had to do was get title insurance. They never mentioned it to their um, real estate agent either because they just thought it was such a good deal. They didn't want someone to steal it. But again, it, it happens. So always get title insurance. There's really no reason not to. Understanding the difference between a lender's policy and an owner's policy. So basically the lender's policy, very simply stated, only protects the lender. And that coverage goes away once the mortgage is paid off. So some defects in title cannot be detected um, during our search. The owner could suffer considerable financial loss or total loss of the property. So then you also need to have owner's title insurance because that will protect you. So title insurance is designed to protect the policyholder against all covered claims, including the cost of legal defense, which could cost thousands, a lot of money. And, and title insurance loss lasts for as long as you own the home. So there's really no reason not to have it. Closing day, this is really simple, but there's a little bit more to it. But basically, <laughs> we walk through all the documents, answer all the questions, and ensure that all the documents are understood before signing. And then we review the final numbers, hand out the copies of everything that people have signed, and then we record it at the county. So the main thing we want is no surprises at the table. Nobody should suddenly find out there's a divorce or there's a well on the property. And the final numbers of who brings what is pretty much already been seen and known. This is just a final getting the wet signature type of thing. Nobody ever comes to the table and realizes, oh, wait, I owe 10,000 more or something like that. I mean, well, I shouldn't say number, but basically all these, we should have gotten the also the final numbers to the real estate agent to look over. And this is preference real estate agents too. Sometimes they want us to send it to them to look over first and then we forward it to their client. Or sometimes they're just like, nope, just deal with them and let them do it. So it's totally up to the real estate agent on what you want us to do, but there shouldn't be any surprises at the closing table. Tips for a smooth closing. Obviously communication is key. We are here to assist you. Keep in communication with the buyer's lender. Providing us with as much information up front as possible is great. And sometimes these things are just very straightforward and simple. It's a brand new built house. There's, you know, probably not a lot of things tied to it, but just as much information as you can get. 
if some, suddenly somebody says, oh, you know what, I lost my job yesterday, or whatever, that's a red flag. So all those little things. Um, notify their client that their spouse will probably need it at the signing and minimize scheduling on Fridays and last day of the month. A lot of people think that's the best day to close on the house. It's the last day of the month, starting fresh and moving on the weekend. But those can also cause a lot of problems because everybody thinks that. And so suddenly you've got all, and even though we space out our closings, you know how it is. Sometimes when you go to the doctor, you're left waiting in that waiting room 45 minutes an hour because someone else didn't show up or someone got chatty or whatever. So if I was a real estate agent personally, I would avoid closing on Fridays and the last day of the month just because it, it eliminates any potential for anything being held up. Best practices, having that closing worksheet or agent worksheet filled out, and I can email that to all of you as well. Um, that's all the information that, that you need to give us. And it's very easy to fill out. If you're aware that your seller is, is, is POA, a state trust or anything, convey that information immediately. Again, scheduling info. If you know ahead of time that they work, you know, Monday through Wednesday and don't on Thursday or whatever, like any kind of days that work better. It's just easier to schedule that way. And of course, things have been a little different since COVID and with pre-signs, we're waiving all pre-sign fees. And then also having less people at the closing table typically has been very much easier to schedule. And again, the details of any work done on the property, any kind of invoices that have been paid or outstanding or whatever. Make sure we have those too. And then wells on the property is very important. Um, don't have somebody say, you know, I think there might be, I'm not really sure. Always figure out if there is a well on the property or not. And the importance of that is because you have to either have the well in use, not in use, or property properly sealed. Like the well has to be properly sealed by a certified company. Um, it can't just be sitting there not in use. It has to be sealed. So that's really important information too. Here's some things that are new. Obviously, like the whole rest of the world, we're sanitizing everything before and after the closings, doing extra cleanings, um, not taking the pens back. If you, if you touch it, it's kind of yours type thing. And you know, everybody's comfort level is a little different. You can kind of read the client sometimes, but we also want to protect our closers. Um, and make sure they have masks and hand sanitizer. Some people are like, nope, that's fine, whatever. You don't have to wear masks. And some people want to keep their distance and do the drive-through closing or the no contact closing. Whatever we need to do to kind of make it happen. We've pretty much accommodated everything. I don't think any has been canceled because someone's felt uncomfortable with the way that we've done things. And because of all these changes coming in July, we are going to be doing RON, which I'm going to also be coordinating a class on that just a very quick rundown of exactly what RON closings are. What that stands for is remote online notarization. So essentially, you will be able to do a closing, much like we are doing right now, through a screen. There'll be like a three-point identification process to make sure that that person is the person, and the, the whole closing will be recorded and stored for at least 10 years with the county and with us. So this, this is not meant to take away from that final day at the table where people are taking pictures with the sold sign and happy for clients at all. I know some agents are absolutely thrilled with this. They are fine going through the final walkthrough, taking some photos that way, and then letting them close this way. And I think, you know, it's good for, first of all, millennials who seem to think, you know, signing on papers is old fashioned, which it kind of is. We're in 2020. And also... For elderly people that maybe don't feel comfortable and they're high risk, they can close safely this way. And as a real estate agent, you can just guide them through the comfortableness of the process. Make sure they have a full functioning internet and audio. Those are the simple things. And it will be scheduled just like any other closing is scheduled on someone's calendar. So I think that that's an awesome thing that is going to be coming. And I'm sure you've made changes in your business as well to adjust to this new normal. So those are all kind of, that's kind of the thing that title did is making sure that we're able to do those remote closings. And that's it. Thank you for your time. This is my email, my phone number. If anybody has any questions, reach out to me anytime. I'm more than happy to help you. And we really look forward to being able to um, do business with, with you guys. We're Minnesota Title, Melanie Schmidt, and have a good day. Bye.